Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to this Loopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right, given what we what we just saw here. But yeah. more importantly, how are you how, how are you doing, Jared? I have no I mean well, I have one complaint. New tradition, good tradition. Mm-hmm. See, we got a good crack on that. Everything's gonna be all right. Listen, everything's gonna be all right. What do we say to the god of death? We say not today. Mm-hmm. It's 2024 college football. We have a 12 team playoff. All we got to do is win the Big Ten. Everything's going to be fine. C Spike says, doing pretty awful, Kyle. Everything's going to be fine. I'm not worried about it. Listen, we told you. And yeah, we listen, Oregon had a rough start to the season. And that, that made us a little too confident on Thursday. Made us a little too confident when we did the uh, Know Your Enemy show. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. Made us a little too confident. That being said, if you go back and you listen to our preseason episodes, we told you Ohio State's likely to drop this game against Oregon. That's back when we thought See, so like we thought Oregon was going to be an elite football team. Then they struggled against Idaho. They struggled against Boise. Uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe they are not that good. Then the offensive line and Dylan Gabriel, they started to figure things out. And they started to become the Oregon that we knew that they could be at the beginning of the season. And now they're, they're playing at that elite level again. That's This is the Oregon team not who we thought they were in September, but the Oregon team who we thought they were in August. And back in August, we told you, we told you, Ohio State's likely to lose this game against Oregon, traveling all the way across the country against a team that is just as good as you are and playing in their stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, there, there were, a top five team, top three team here. How State comes in. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's a match of two top teams going at it. It came down to the wire one point. It was a one point game between these two um, title top contenders, five. like, yeah. like title, title contenders. Like the, it was these two teams in Texas were the teams that we had in our, we believe that, they sit above the rest and they, they showed it. They, they yeah. both teams showed it this, uh, uh, tonight here as we are just trying to wrap our brains around what we just saw here. That lo- lots of improvement that Ohio state obviously can do, especially on sure. the defensive side there, but a lot, a lot of things you can take from this too. more, more on the offensive side. Will Howard, everybody's going to talk about that last play that he did where yeah, he that wasn't great. T- took, Took took that one extra second uh, to try to get some extra yards there, but other than that, yeah, fantastic game. Eighty percent completion, over three hundred yards passing. What was in my mind? It's not the off- offense; it's not the issue here. It's it, the defense needs work. The secondary got worked on. They got worked on all game here, and it's uh, Noles has to figure it out. Like what's yeah. How 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 can this defense get better rush get better pressure on the quarterback and these defensive backs to play better play up to their talent these are these are elite corners and safeties yeah and they got they got they got torched Burnt. they got torched here yeah um, listen Denzel Burke's an amazing cornerback he had a really bad night um. It happens. You know, if you're an amazing corner and you say, yeah, put me up against their number one guy and put me on that island with him. You, Mm -hmm. It sometimes it doesn't end well. And tonight it did not end well for Denzel Um, Burt. Is what it is. He's an amazing football player. He has done amazing things for Ohio State. He will continue to do amazing things for Ohio State. And, and 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 to sort of played like he had the flu. Not sure what that means. Um, but the uh, I think an important 
takeaway as well is we also told you if you if listen to like our Ohio State previews at the beginning of the season, we, we looked at this October slate, which was Iowa, Oregon, and Nebraska, and we said Ohio State's probably going to lose one of those games. Ohio State's probably going to lose one of those games. Yeah. Okay, and, here's and, the one. And honestly, yeah, and honestly, like, I believe, like, what we said here is that, yeah, we, we think that Ohio State, if they were going to lose one game, it was going to be this Oregon game here, but sure. in the grand scheme of things, does this really matter? No. You, you, not really. If Ohio State wins out, they go on to the Big Ten Championship game. And Another re, a, a rematch of what's looking like Ohio State and Oregon here. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you this you, time you in run the, the Eastern table time thing. zone. You, you, yeah. You run the, you run the <laughs> tables. You run the tables here. Listen, y'all, East Indiana is in the Eastern time zone. <laughs> Come get it, Oregon. <laughs> Preseason, who would have thought we would be praising the O line and bashing the secondary? Uh, DC Buckeye, I don't know if I, I don't know if I know you or not. You must be a new face here. Uh, that's a very good point. Um, I thought the offensive line played excellently tonight, especially without Josh Simmons. Uh, mm -hmm. Aside from a false start from from Zen Mikowski, um, which was even kind of nitpicky in my opinion um he had a great game um i don't like losing i know yeah i mean of course who doesn't want to you know run the table and win it all and win every single game by 40 points who doesn't want that and like ohio state's going to fall in the rankings the ap is going to drop him a couple spots i don't care and i hear someone saying what no you can't say this game doesn't mean anything and if ohio state wins out then they can't won't necessarily go to indianapolis because now they've lost a game in the big 10 and there are other teams who are undefeated it, it, it'll work out if i sit runs the slate they will be second at worst in the big 10 i yep, know exactly. illinois is undefeated in the big 10 i know Illinois is undefeated in the Big Ten, right? Their one loss was out of conference. Or Anyway, uh, Indiana is undefeated in the Big Ten, and Penn State's undefeated in the Big Ten, and we'll even play Penn State this year. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. We'll All make right, it to the um, Big Ten title game. I know, a lot, lot, lot to talk about here. But, but now I, we're I down we should... to Mario Man and a tackle. Listen, the old Sloopcast rule of you only get one Mario Man doesn't apply to the 12-team playoff anymore. That's we, We've not had to retire too many Sloopcast rules over the years. That's, that's one we can pretty easily retire. If you're a Big Ten or SEC team, you have more than one Mario Man. Yeah. Yep. We do uh, need I, to get to the report card. Yep. Let, let's go ahead and get to the report card here, Jared. All right. Now I'm going to throw this out there because I know I'm going to give some grades that are more positive than people are going to want to hear on a post game show right after a loss. So I'm just going to do a blanket defense of some of my positive sounding grades. Just off the top here. These great, this report card is going to be way more positive than a lot of you are going to want to see it. You, so, and I know how Buckeye fans are after a loss. You want blood. Do and you want me to Do. fill this up with F's playing the number three team, number three team in the country, uh, on the opposite coast in their stadium, lost by one point. If, you, if you're coming here looking for doom and gloom and for blood, this isn't going to be your show. Right, Spike says F minus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's let's jump it. Let's jump into it here. All right. Offensive um, game plan. Offensive game plan. I didn't think it was, I don't think it was terrible. I know there was a few questionable plays there, but I think overall, I, I don't think it was that bad offensively here. Almost 500, 500 yards total, 467 to be precise. Three, I have no problem whatsoever with the game plan. 
326 in the air and 141 on the ground. Uh, Travion rushed for 8.7. Um, they, they really contained Judkins. This is the first time that we've really seen Judkins like really contained all year. I was waiting for him to get that one, one breakout um, rush there. Nope, ne- never, never happened here. Um, I was so I was a little surprised about the the rushing. I thought I thought Ohio State would have rushed a little bit more here, but uh, I think that's a yeah, valid I, point. I, I would I would say I would say I'd say like a B plus. I was I was overall pleased. I was overall pleased with the with the game plan. Yeah, I'm gonna go with an A minus only because I feel like it should have been a little bit more run focused personally. I think we were doing better when we were running the ball. Um, that being said, Howard had a great day. Um, so it's not like passing the ball too much was some sort of huge failure, but just maybe it's a personal preference thing. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. All right. Uh, game management. Okay. Game uh, management. All right. Um, we, we, all, right. All, right. all right, guys. All there's right. going to be some knocks here. There is. There is going to be some knocks. Now, the end of the end of the game there. That, that that that's on that's on Ryan Day. That's on Ryan Day. He's got to know it's an offensive it's an offensive up penalty. That clock's going to keep ticking there. In Ryan Day's defense, it's a stupid rule. It is. It is. The but play. Oh well, the, well, the play ended. The play ended in bounds on a catch. No, the play never happened. But whatever. But um, it, but it's still offensive. Yeah. So I got. Other than other than that one. Offensively, again, offensively. Other than that, I thought they were fine. So, but but I mean, that last drive has got to knock it down so much because that was the game. Sure, that was the game. Right Absolutely. There. So, I gotta mark. I gotta mark that down like to like a D. Like that was the difference maker. Uh, if it, everything else, I thought it was fine from a from a game management. But uh, yeah, I gotta say a D. I gotta say D for game management because that was on the line. That was on the line, and if you if you were able to run that ball sooner, it, we maybe we be singing a different tune here, where where Will Howard had more time, set up a field goal, and Ohio State had a chance to kick, kick the winning field goal there. We'd be singing a different tune possibly, but yeah, and yeah, D. I don't know. Like I know the the quarterback is essentially a coach on the field. So running that ball was just such a poor decision on Howard's part. And I'm going to incorporate that into my grade. It was, um, Z Spike says it was Georgia all over again. I don't know if that's accurate. We, we only needed a field goal and like the freshman pushed off a little too obviously. And if not for that, yeah, we, we get the field goal. Um, uh, um, Passing, well, Howard. Well, Howard was excellent. I mean, yeah. I gotta give, I gotta give the passing an A. Like Will yeah. Howard was really good, eighty percent completion. He was up to like eighty six percent at one point of the of the drive there. That last drive, he was on target. Uh, if I can try to pull up the uh, the plays there, like he was on target that that last drive there. I was really really impressed with. How Howard and how well he was throwing the ball with accuracy. Yeah, a couple of bad throws, but every quarterback's going to have that. Overall, zero, zero turnovers by Howard, which was a concern because he was starting to get a little, um, starting to throw a little bit more interceptions that we would like to the past few games. Yeah, very impressed. A. Um, Cac. I'm sorry. I'm going to pronounce your name, Cac. If that's, we don't pronounce anything right here at the Sloopcast. If you're new here, so. Uh, Apologies if that's not how you want me to pronounce that. Um, that was that was uh, that was a BS offensive PI. How can you say he pushed off too obvious? Because he did push off. He got at the top of the route. The elbow and he pushed, extend. and then he. I mean that that is technically a penalty by the letter of the law. That is a penalty. Now you could say, and I wouldn't blame you for saying this. You could say, but that happens all the time, and it's never called. And that shouldn't be called in that situation. Okay. I mean, that's, that's fair, but 
by the letter of the law, that is in fact a penalty. Um, unfortunately. Yep. That's right. What do you give? Uh, Joe Cotton says we should have went for two after the touchdown. Eh. Don't don't chase points that I, I don't I don't think so. I don't I don't yeah, I, I I'm not one for chasing points until it's absolutely necessary. Big uh, Big Ten refs are in discussion every single game this year. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's always gonna be something. Uh passing, yep. yeah, I, I'm good with an A. Uh all right. Um, all right, rushing, rushing here. Uh I felt like when they ran the ball, I thought I thought they had success, especially with uh, Henderson. Trevion uh, did really well on the ground there. Um, I would say B. I would say a solid B on the on the running there. Uh, they were they were up to I think it was like five seven up until the the last couple of drives, and that that went down a little bit. But chat, I, we I also they, want they your really, input. No, keep talking, Kyle. No, I was just telling chat, we have some new names in oh, here. We want your yeah, input B. on the on what yeah. you think the grade should be for running, specifically yeah, running. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh I have no problem with the with the running offense this game. I, I feel perfectly happy leaving it at an A. Okay. Spikes that's, that's says fine. B. Yeah, Z Spike says B there. That's fine. Uh let's see here. Receiving. Uh I don't really recall a drop. And I know, I think we were watching the game. We had live um, reaction of the game over at uh, discord that the Um, We, we were watching the game together while we were communicating together in our, in yeah, our discord. We were chatting and uh, a, lot, a lot of people were, were saying that, Oh, Jeremiah should have caught that. That, that, that ball was tipped. Um, I think it was in the fourth quarter. That ball was tipped and, he wouldn't have been able to catch that. It was off of his fingertips anyway, too. I didn't really recall really any drop passes. There might've been one in there, but I don't really recall any critical ones that the receivers had. So I'd say like an, I'd say like an A minus, I think an A minus um, would suffice. Uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah. I, I One of the issues I'm going to have with receiving, um, is yeah, the we'll fact that the, the defense is the fact. Yeah. We'll get to the defense um, is the fact that the, I mean, the, a wide receiver cost. I don't want to say cost us the game. That's way too dramatic to say, but the, the offensive right. pass interference ultimately led to the loss. And I think that has to be factored in. I don't think it should be but a he, huge factor, but it should be factored in. But he also, but he also was the reason for them to get, I know that close to kicking the field goal too. I know. So, I all right. I mean, I, I gave him an A minus. I didn't right, roast got, him. Yep, we got A minuses in the uh, in the chat as well. There. All right. Uh, run blocking. I thought I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. There's definitely moments taking consideration with the injuries. Um, I, I think that has to be taken into consideration. Yeah, I, I would say B. I would say B as well I, I thought the i thought the run blocking but run blocking if i can talk uh was fine it, it definitely could be better but I, th I thought it was fine so i would say a b yeah I, I think i'm actually going to go a bit higher than that and i will say that the run blocking was better in the first half than it was in the second half but like when we lost josh simmons I kind of thought everything was going to fall apart and I was pretty happy that it didn't. Um, so shout out to, to Zen Mikowski for, for coming in, doing good. Kyle, did you say B on that? I did. Yes. Yep. I'm gonna go B plus personally. All right. That's fine. I see B, B minus yeah. C. So, okay. All right. Um, pass blocking. Only one sack, and honestly, that wasn't on the the uh, offensive lineman. Uh, Will Howard just tripped up, just tripped and lost his balance there. I thought overall they they did fine. They they gave him time. So I, I actually he, I would grade that a little bit higher. I would, I would say I would say like a B plus A minus for for the pass blocking. I'll say he did have to do a lot of dodging, especially when the game was on the line. Um. 
when the game was on the line, I felt like he had to do a lot of pocket maneuvering. I think the lack of sacks should at least be credited partially to Howard and not necessarily the offensive line. Um, and I'm not completely knocking the offensive line. I thought they had a, a good game. Um, I, I think a B plus is yep, sufficient. We got a B plus in there as well. Chat says B plus. Right. What did you say, Joe? Yep. yep, I have B plus as well. All right, and third downs. I would say it was four for twelve. They, they were one for seven before, um, before the last two or three drives. There, they were bad. They were yeah. bad on third downs there. So, yeah, it's it's got to be like a C minus for me. C minus, and it only brought up just because of those last couple of drives where they were able to convert those third downs. It was really bad, really bad third down conversions. I I think you're being generous. I'm gonna go like a D. I, I probably am. I'm probably am. <laughs> I got an F. I got a D plus from Bird Brain. I got an F. <laughs> I'll meet y'all halfway and do a D minus. All right. All right, Kyle. Uh, let's do a quick self promo. We are the Buckeye Sloopcast. We're streaming here on Buckeye, or excuse me, on Buckeye, on Bleacher Ooh. Report. We're streaming here on Bleacher Report. Um, if you don't know us, you can find us on YouTube at Sloopcast. Dot, excuse me, at YouTube. Dot the uh, You can join our Discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we have a pair of merch stores. You can see some of that up on the screen. And if you're just looking for our links in general, uh, you can find a, you can just go to thesloopcast.com and find all of our other links and come hang out with us uh, if you like what you see here today. Uh, what about all the false starts on the O-line? Ooh, Jake Armstrong. That's a good point. That is, um, yeah. That, I don't necessarily that, that we will that that's a good point. It doesn't necessarily fall into run blocking or pass blocking. Um, if you look under the team section of yep. our report card, there's a discipline section that will address that in. But good yep. input. Thank you. Yes. All right. Let's start with the defense. Uh, game plan. I'll, I'll let you tackle this one because I'm. I, I may be really harsh here. I want to hear your side first. Defensive game plan. Yep. Um, not great. Um, the choice to leave Burke on an island wasn't great. Um, the, I feel like, listen, we, we all talk about how great Knowles is at coming in and fixing things in the, in the second half. But at the same time, like, why, why don't we show up to games with good game plans? Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go like C minus here. And I feel like I might even be generous with that. I, I, I gotta, I gotta go with an F. Okay. Like I'm going, I'm going with an F here. Like you have elite corners, you have elite safeties. And they and they seem they seem like they had no idea what they were doing. They seem like that this was their first game of the year, which some may some may say that uh, for for the offenses Ohio State has played so far this year. But like, but putting a lot of these corners in in the island by themselves, when you see that they're struggling, they need help. Like. I understand, understand as, as you're watching the game here, you saw that I think the game plan was to contain Gabriel, making sure that he doesn't get out of the pocket, make long runs, did get that one touchdown, uh, long touchdown run, but they really try to contain him and that really backfired on them, gave Gabriel too much too much time to throw and put, put the corners on an island when they're just... They were just having an awful day. One of the worst, one of the worst games uh, as a Buckeye for each of them, for Iggy, for Burke. They, they, both of them had really bad games. Uh, Bird Brain in the chat says relying too much on front four for pressure, not being able to defend the pass with linebackers and coverage. Bird Brain, we haven't got to first off your 
underestimating yourself with that username because that's actually uh, very accurate. Um, the yeah, I agree. I mean, I just totally agree with you. The The front four is not getting enough pressure. And if you listen to our pregame show or watched any Oregon games after the first two, you saw how good their offensive line is. They have an elite offensive line, top five offensive line in the country. Uh, Knowles was way too confident that the front four was going to apply pressure when it wasn't applying pressure. And now that I say that out loud, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this down to a D plus because I think that's an important factor. Uh, yeah. Game management. But no changes. Like we, we praised, we praised Ohio State, both offensive and defensively of their changes, their improvements that they do to the second half. I think there was, there was just a crazy stat out there. Like Ohio State before this game was like scored over 80 points and led up like only seven points in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. We, we all thought it was going to be like, going to have something like that. The um, defense was kind of come out. It's going to change. They're going to be able to contain Oregon more. That never happened. Never happened here. So from a game management point, I, I got to get enough as well. I got to give enough. Almost yeah. 500, yard, just shy of 500 yards. You let up here. You're not going to win many games like that. Yeah, they needed to start sending blitzes straight up. The the front four was not getting sufficient pressure. And I know that it's, it's hard to. Let me acknowledge something real quick. It's hard to say, hey, stop putting your cornerbacks on an island one on one. And then turn around and say, hey, you need to blitz more often. I understand that those are two contracting, contracting, contrasting points of view. I get that. And I understand that, like, you have to mix that up a bit. I get that. Mm -hmm. But they were leaving. They did the blitz, uh, didn't get home either. Well, they didn't do the blitz often enough or. (sighs) There could have been more creative ways of blitzing. I don't feel like they blitzed all that often. And when they did, it wasn't Mm. necessarily like inspiring blitzes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So F's all around there. Uh, run stop. 155 yards on the ground, five yards of pop for to, to let up here. Uh, Jordan James, 115 yards on the ground there. Too many, too many yards for, for this type of uh, defense here. So I, I got, I got to get, I get to give like a D I was, not not impressed with with the run stop here. Um, there, there was definitely plays like like down at the goal line there. They they stood up, they stopped them, forced them to a field goal. Where, where's the rest of that at? Where, where was that the yeah. rest of the game? I mean, the fact that they had so many good goal line stands is why I'm giving the run stop a D and not an F, quite frankly. Yes. Yep. Um I, I think that's what's stopping me from straight up failing them on in that respect. Um, let's see. I see a C, a D, and an F in the chat. Yeah. I will um, meet in the middle you halfway and, and go D. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, pass rush F. I I don't even need to explain. Like, do, do you want to contribute, Jared? Like. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. No, no rushes, no, no quarterback hurries, no sacks. Like felt like Gabriel could tuck himself in bed there. Like he yeah. was, he was so comfortable. He was so comfortable back there. Yeah. The, this defensive line has too many recruiting stars to get as little pressure as they do. And yep. this, isn't new to this game. This isn't the first time Kyle and I have leveled this criticism against them. This isn't the first season I've leveled this criticism against them. Jack Sawyer and JT are at times amazing, but at times totally disappear. And I understand that this Oregon offensive line is one of the better offensive lines in the country. And I understand that JT showed up at times 
Um, but he also showed up at times in bad ways. The, the huge Dylan Gabriel touchdown run was directly his fault. Um, mm-hmm. Again, this Oregon offensive line is really, really good. Uh, but if you're going to win a national title, you're going to have to face this offensive line probably once, if not twice more. Yep. You're going to have to play them in Indianapolis and then again in the playoffs. And by the way, Texas has a really good offensive line too. And so does Alabama. And so does Georgia. And so do other teams who are going to make the playoffs. So it's one thing to say this Alabama offensive line is really good. Okay, but, or excuse me, I said Alabama. It's one thing to say this Oregon offensive line is really good, but okay, but so is Alabama's. So is Georgia's. So is Texas. You're going to have to adjust to that. If yep. you if you can't, if you're not going to get there one-on-one, then you need to adjust to that. Good news, Jared. Good news is that it is October, not end of November right now. So there there is time yeah, to there's time. hopefully clean, clean it up. So So we'll see here. Uh, our our defensive line deserves the M tier until they can prove otherwise. Well, this this is a report card, not a tier list. Yeah. If you want, if you want to watch our tier list episodes, tune into the mm-hmm. YouTube on yep. Tuesday. Uh, pass coverage. You want oh, to start, good Jared? Lord. I love. I, I let me just say, I love Burke, and I love Iggy. Mm-hmm. Um, they had bad nights. Uh, am, ne- am I I've wrong for thinking seen... the linebackers were out of position for a lot of the game? Um, no. usually has great linebackers. <sighs> Honestly, I didn't think the linebackers played terrible. In all honesty, I mean, there there's there was times when they. I think there was times, especially on the run, that they they didn't stop the run in time, though. But I thought Cody Simon had a pretty good game. I thought Sonny Styles made some uh, great tackles down the stretch there. I, I don't think the issues were were the the linebackers themselves. Why not put Matthews for Burke? Burke is still your best cornerback. I understand he yeah, had a bad Burke night, is- but I I don't think. You need Burke for the rest of the season. And I think if you pull him, you shatter his confidence. Yeah. And quite frankly, and yeah, he had two consecutive drives where he got smashed. But did he have any terrible plays after that? He played a good second half. Like, it all starts up front. They haven't gotten it done once. At one hundred percent, Christopher, one hundred percent. It's easy to beat up on Burke. I'm not. I'm not saying he didn't have a bad game because Burke did have a bad game. So don't get me wrong. I'm not like trying to totally yeah. defend him. But at the same time, the whole idea of leaving a cornerback on an island like that. When you when you see him struggling, that that's the thing. When you when as a as a as a defensive coordinator, you see your star corner struggling. You, you need to somehow get him support and yeah in other ways. But and at the same you, time, but at the same time, from a game plan standpoint, if you leave the corner all by himself, that's a risk. But the benefit that's supposed to come with that risk is that it frees up someone to blitz. Hmm. Yeah. So if you leave a corner, I don't care. I don't uh, go pick your favorite NFL cornerback. Put him on an island against some of these really talented wide receivers. If you give that wide receiver enough time, he'll beat that cornerback. There's yeah. a lot of field and one corner. The idea of leaving Burke one on one with someone is that the defensive line or linebackers or whoever are supposed to get pressure on the quarterback so that he can't just sit back there and cleanly gun it to the exact right spot on the field. And by the way, it needs to be said, Dylan Gabriel was fucking money this game. Like his deep balls were on point. Yeah. We were, we were waiting for a moment when Gabriel was going to 
throw that costly interception because he, he's been doing that recently here. And we thought that he was due for one. And yeah, I mean, hats off to him. He he played he played an outsta- outstanding game yeah. there. Dylan Gabriel um, is everything we thought he would be. But 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 going back, pass coverage in, in F. F, yes. Um I, I'm, tackling, I'm saying an F, but yeah, man, yeah, it's also on the pass rush. Yes. Uh tackling. I would say a D. There, there were there was a lot of missed tackles, a lot of missed tackles, more more than what we're accustomed to seeing so far from this team this year. I, I got it happens when you for tackling. I mean, it happens when you play talented players, right? It is a it talented is, yes. player puts you in position to miss a tackle. That's why they're talented. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of it. It wasn't a great performance overall from the defense in general. Um, Mostly one player. Nah, there were a lot of tackling issues. There, there, there was a, there was a lot. There was a lot. All right. And third downs, uh, Oregon was six for 14 on third downs. I, I would say like a, a C C minus. I'll, I'll stay with this. I'll stay with the C. They, they, they got off. Uh, there, there was drives where they, the defense did get them off. Um, did stop them on third down. Um, I, I thought the the third down stoppage right there at the end there to give Ohio State a chance to go down and kick a game winning field goal um, that that put a lot of confidence in me in seeing how this team can grow and improve as the year goes along. Um, as my confident my confidence grew from from that uh, from that third down conversion there, but yeah, I, w- I would say a C. Uh, Beat Blue, if you think Oregon tackled perfectly, I don't know if we were watching the same game. I, I think you just expect Ohio State players to break tackles and you just expect Ohio State defensive players to make tackles. And therefore, when you don't see that happen, it sticks more in your brain. Yeah. Ohio Trey, State forced plenty of missed tackles. Trey, Trey forced um, missed tackles and Mecca forced a lot of missed tackles he he, yeah. he was he was on money oregon did not tackle perfectly in that game no all right uh special teams i i can't say really anything about bad about about kicking uh how state how state did really well in kicking so a a for me um punting <sighs> Uh, what, what, yeah, I'm, I'm fine doing the A's there. Yeah. Um, I've, I, I mean, pun, pun, don't know I, what I'm, I'm so, talking about, quite I frankly. So, yeah, I, I still worry about punting. Like, the ball's not getting deep enough on on some of those on those punts there. I I feel if we get to a situation where, where Ohio State's in a game where field field advantage uh, plays a big factor, Ohio State's going to like lose this one? that. It's going to lose that. You mean like this game? I think this game was more of which defense is actually going to is actually going to do something. Yeah, but it's easier for the defense to do something if Oregon isn't constantly starting on the forty. Yeah. All right. Um, so I, the punting, I think, the punting, I think, is a huge factor in this game. Um, McGuire's leg isn't very strong, quite frankly. No. It's Ohio not. State was constantly giving Oregon the ball at like the 40 yard line. Special teams, special plays, special players. Will Howard give fielding a chance. I I mean, we already talked about Howard on the last play. I don't know if we need to go over it again, but. Um, listen, it's. You got you got a real rough pass interference call at the end. You got a mm-hmm. really rough pass interference call at the end, and that sucks. Um, by the letter of the law, it was legally offensive pass interference. It, it, do you see that exact play not called nine out of ten times? Yeah. Drop snap, off pass interference, fumble, onside kick. And still had a chance. Yeah, I totally agree, Mitchell. And and it's 
again, number three team in their stadium, in their time zone. You, we recover from this. Yep. What do we say to the God of death? We say not today. We recover from this. It's honestly no big deal. Um, it, it's honestly no big deal. We recover yeah. from this. Yep. And then returning, returning is NA. Nobody had any returning. So we, we don't, we don't I'll just, I'll just, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it blank. Okay. Uh, what did you uh, say the punt, your punting was Kyle? Um, it was, it was a B like B my, just put a B minus for me. Okay. Put a B minus. I don't know if the chat ever said also it's, it's punting. Who cares? Yep. Team, uh, the team as a whole here. Uh, after. we will talk about the team as a whole. After we do another quick self promo time, quick self promo. Uh, we are the Buckeye Sloopcast. If uh, there's a lot of new faces in the uh, in the chat, in the Bleacher Report chat, um, we're on the Buckeye Huddle Network. Uh, you can find us on the Buckeye Huddle YouTube page. You could also find us on our own personal YouTube page, youtube.thesloopcast.com. Um, you can join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. All of these episodes are released as audio versions. You can find those on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, or if you just need a straight up podcast feed, there's rss.thesloopcast.com. Um, if I could tell you to do any one thing, join the Discord server. And if you're looking for any of these links I just rattled off, just visit thesloopcast.com where you'll find all of those links. All right, Kyle. Team. Effort. It's two sides of a coin here. Okay. All, offense did really well. The offense did really well. Defense struggled here. <sighs> but man, there, there was definitely a lot of good efforts that I saw in the game, especially down at the the goal line stance there. Love to see the I, effort, but I really don't think effort was the else. issue here. I think there's a lot of blame to spread around and I really just don't, I don't feel like effort was an issue. I, I got Effort it, I on defense it. brings down to an F. I don't think so. I, I think you guys I, I are being say. rough. I think there were game plan issues. I think there were coaching issues. I think there were think. discipline issues, but I felt like everyone was playing hard. I never thought to myself, these guys don't care. These guys didn't show up. These guys are lazy. I never thought yeah, any of that. I, there no. were absolutely issues. I don't think that it was due to a lack of effort, though. I'm going to give yeah, them my, an A. My, my, my gut's like CC plus. So I'll, I'll, that's what the chat is saying, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go with C plus. I'll, I'll go with C plus. I, I, I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of issues. I don't think effort was the issue. You saw... Mm -hmm the Ohio state defense with a goal line stand forcing Oregon to kick a field goal at the end of the game. You saw Ohio state driving down the field. And again, if not for the pass interference call, you get a chance at a field goal. I, there was no lack of effort. There's a lot of things to criticize this team about. This team gave all of the fucks that they had. And sometimes that's all you can ask for them. And I think most of the deficiencies in my opinion, were coaching deficiencies. Although there were some discipline and some execution issues, which we will get to now. Discipline. Eight penalties for 70 yards. I'd say almost all of those seemed like they were false starts, it seemed like. <laughs> yeah. Right, listen, the, the false starts. They have four. They have four. Four One false of them starts. One of them was on Zen, who never expected to be in the game. I'll, I'll give I'll give Zen a bit of grace. The other three, not so much. Um, I thought there were some bad calls. Personally, I thought, um, but I don't like to talk about refs too much. That's just not something I like to do. Um, this and by the way, like discipline isn't just penalties. I think a, a, a prime example of this is JT chasing down the running back instead of mm -hmm. keeping contain on Dylan Gabriel. 
that's a discipline failure. Mind. That's a discipline yeah. failure. He wasn't playing his role. I I I got to say D minus. I'll say D minus for me. Yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go just D, but I, I hear you. Although the chat is going straight up F, uh, and the, and the chat has no mercy. Um, it's understandable. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even gonna tell them they're wrong. I mean, you gave them a D minus. That's literally just one yeah. spot above. All right. All right. Execution. Oh, my uh, lights just turned off. Oh, Jared's setting the mood here for the execution. Uh, well, the <laughs> ex- execution. I. It's midnight. My lights are set to turn off automatically at midnight. Let me at least get this light up. I, I'm, I'm going to say C minus for for execution. I liked what I saw offensively, especially in the passing. Like, like I said, Will Howard was red hot throwing the ball, eighty percent, eighty percent against a, a pretty good, um, pretty good Oregon uh, defense here. We, we knew they were going to have we knew they were going to have some success here. That's, um, but, but the but the rating definitely goes down because of the execution that we saw defensively too. So I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll go I'll go with a C minus for for execution. Yeah, there were certainly some execution issues. Um, especially on the defense, um, on the offensive line. I felt like there's some crucial misses. Um, and yeah, it, I don't know. Execution's a tough one to grade sometimes, but yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go with a C, not a C, not a C minus just a C, but uh, chat generally seems to agree with you with the C minus beat blue said D plus, but I got a lot of C minuses after that. Kyle, I think you have a lot of influence over the chat. If I'm being honest, I feel like they match you a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot of the, uh, sleep cats over our discord is team Kyle. So, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's always that. All right. Overall, overall. All right. All right. Let's. No need overall. to panic. We will be fine. Yep. We'll, we'll learn a lot team. from this. Good night, all. Oh, hey, the, the, uh, the, thank you for, for stopping by, CAC. Uh, join the Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. You seem like an yeah. intelligent fan, and we always the, like to have people like you around. The You go to Eugene, you lose by one point. It, it sucks. You, you lose. But Hasi didn't lose by 14, by 20 points. One point game here. It, on, on the road, think, three hour the, time zone yeah, yeah, difference. On the, on, on the road, number there. three team in the country. I, I I would say like overall, it it, it sucks. Yeah, the de- defense is a big concern and definitely something we're going to keep an eye out for, um, for the rest of the season here. But I, I would say I would say C plus. There's 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 a there's a lot there's a lot to like about what we saw here, offensively like. Will Will is a stud. Will Howard is a stud. He's um really really like what I see from him. Obviously a Mecca, the great leadership on the on the receiving core there. Jeremiah Smith does Jeremiah Smith stuff there. And the tight end, the tight ends, uh Guy Scott had had a great game as well, yeah. too. And Tra- and Trevion had a great game too. A lot of great things to take from this here. So I'll, I'll say I'll say C plus. I'll say C plus. There's there's a lot of great things to take from this game. Christopher Tripp makes a really good comment. Um, I hate it, but quality loss. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, that's exactly I'm what it is. I'm, I'm like, with that. Yeah. Ve- by the way, Vegas tells us that home field advantage the three is worth two or three points, depending. Let's just say two in this case. Hey, that's enough to... As a duck, you guys are pretty spot on. Thank you, AK Duck. Um, I appreciate that. He's a really good Oregon team. They say, Vegas tells us, home field advantage is worth two or three points. So if this were a neutral field or in Columbus, by that logic, we would have won. I'm not saying that that's an exact science or that we can count it as a win by any means, but 
point is, yep. is these were two very evenly matched teams. And if slash when we see them in Indianapolis, we're going to get their ass next time. There we go. Yep. Um, overall, I'm going with a B. All right. I see C plus C, C, C in here. So I, I think a C is what the chat is saying here. So. Okay. That's fair. All right. All right. And that is our, our grade, our, our report card for this game. That's our report card. Um, night game probably makes it three. It doesn't help. Uh, for sure. When you're the road team, when you're the road team, you always want to play at noon. When you're at home, you always want to play at night. This is man. The fans get plenty of time to get all liquored up before the game and they're extra loud. Yeah. Seven, seven, Jared, the number seven. That's how many lead changes there were in this game. Yeah. Eventually, this is one of those games where eventually the game just ends. Neither team's yeah. better. It's just eventually the clock has to run out. Mm -hmm. That's it. We'll get them next time. We're going to see them in Indy. And if we don't see them in Indy, we'll see them in the playoffs and we'll get them next time. But I think we're going to see them in Indy. Yep. These are the two best teams in the Big Ten. After watching Penn State play today, I feel really good saying that. <laughs> Yep, yep. All right, any I feel really good saying that after watching Penn State play today. <laughs> yeah. See y'all in Indy, other, Ducks. Other, other than um, other than Big Ten teams going westbound uh, seems to struggle. Other than Penn State getting that win, Penn State got that win though. But we'll cover that in yeah. our um, in our they, but they in our um, super, next super. But they super underperformed the spread. Understand, understand. Penn State is booty. Uh, AK Duck, on that we agree. So, with a little bit of uh, <laughs> with a little bit of camaraderie between fan uh, bases, I think it's time mm -hmm. to end the show. Um, this is the Bleacher Report version, so I'm just going to jump right to it and say, "Oh, uh, I do have, oh, I do have." Oh, Kyle's one corner. Sorry, forgot here. about Kyle's corner. I do have one bit of um, bad news here for Buckeye fans here. Uh, Ryan Day is talking on um, with the post game reports here, and he says, "quote The injury to Josh to uh, Josh Simmons hurts. I'll get an update to Simmons, but it does not look good. It does not look great in terms of him coming back this season. It, it looks this like an big, ACL. this is this is a big hit for us. It's it's huge. Um, I'll say that, that Zen looked good in the time he had in this game, or at least." I didn't notice him a lot, <laughs> which is sometimes when you're an offensive lineman, especially left tackle, not being noticed during a live broadcast is sometimes the best thing that, that someone can say. Um, okay. That was, that was Kyle's corner. Yep. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music. And of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, we're the Sloopcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>